season opener across Georgia for high school football games, but two teams in Richmond County will not be playing. Laney and Josie are not taking the field after learning a player on Laney's team tested positive for COVID. Now the game is postponed until a later date. Masks in the hallways, classrooms, and cafeterias is becoming a common sight, and Aiken County students are no exception today as they start their new school year. Students are starting with a hybrid model, but soon the district hopes to be fully in person. Kennedy Harris spoke with local school officials on plans to accomplish that. It's the first day of school unlike any other. Students in Aiken County return to school today with a lot of changes in place. A familiar place with unfamiliar changes. Tense. It's been very tense all summer. We've, um, you know, we knew that this day was coming. We've all been excited about it. Superintendent King Lawrence stopped by a few schools to see the changes. The children are, are cooperating. They're doing what, what we've asked them to do. Parents, you've done an incredible job of, of, of getting your children ready for school. Adjusting to change can be hard, so the staff at Oakwood Windsor Elementary used the first day to teach students about the new expectations. This is not normal, of course, but this is our new norm, and so we spent a great deal of time last week during the teacher prep time talking about the need to teach our kids about these health and safety precautions. That's a part of our rituals and routines now. Other than the mask, arrows in the halls, and closed water fountains, the small class sizes are a very noticeable change. Um, of course, within the classrooms, we have only half of our kids here today, each day, but the desks are situated in a way to where students are six feet apart so they can take mask breaks. The elementary kids stay in the classroom for lunch and related arts. High schoolers are eating lunch at a distance. The plan is to reopen elementary schools to traditional learning five days a week on September 21st. If we have problems with, with an outbreak or something like that, or if, if the uh, virus trends start going back up again in Aiken County, then we'll certainly reevaluate that. We're, we're not going to do anything that we don't believe is in the best interest of our students and families. And the other half of students that chose the traditional route will return to school on Wednesday. Reporting at Aiken, Kennedy Harris, on your side. Nearly 7,000 Aiken County students are choosing to skip in-person classes altogether. About 30% of students are learning from home full-time. Brittany Chappell spoke with parents who spoke with parents who say it's been a bit of a rocky transition. It may not feel the same as walking into school, but there are still first-day jitters at home. We didn't get her books until just a couple of days ago. We didn't even really know who her teacher was until um, Friday. Kim Dallich and her six-year-old Madison say it's Our been kids. a little crazy, but the first day of Aiken Innovate was pretty smooth. Other than some early logon issues, they hopped on Microsoft Teams and joined class. This is all new for everybody. Um, so I think that they probably did the best that they could, and it just this is just how it happened. And there's just a, a whole thread of, I'm, I need help, we're lost, we can't get in, what is, where's our login information? John Irvin says it was a morning of questions, but teachers hopped on a video chat quickly to help his 13-year-old Jack. Aiken County School says the new system isn't going to be perfect on the first day. To help, they held a question and answer session last week, and they're responding to Facebook. It's going to take a little bit of time. We ask that, uh, that everyone be patient with each other. Superintendent King Lawrence says he sat down with a parent himself on Friday to sort out some login issues. There were, there were a few little frustrating uh, things, but we were able to work through those. Yes, there have been delays, but the message online is the same as in person. Everyone has to work together. Reporting in Aiken, Brady Trapnell on your side. Aiken County says there will be leeway for students struggling with technology early on. School officials say they've been answering phone calls nonstop. And in Columbia County, the pandemic is forcing 10% of school nutrition workers into other jobs. Superintendent Dr. Sandra Carraway says their current hybrid model is pushing the county to temporarily downsize. The district has 200 cafeteria employees, and they're looking to re relocate 20. Workers are being offered to transition to openings in other jobs, including custodians or bus drivers. We're starting to see fewer daily cases at our local hospitals. And you he is responsible for the content of this ad. Festivals around Augusta might be canceled this year, but that's not stopping local artists from showcasing their skills. In fact, West Taboo is working with an artist on Augusta's latest mural. The message, Black Lives Matter. As Cindy Heiberger explains, this mural is not what you might expect. The mural comes in response to today's Black Lives Matter movement, but the artist tells me it won't include any
any hashtags or specific current events. Instead, he says he wants the message to be positive and timeless. With every brush stroke, Art Reed hopes to turn Black Lives Matter into something people remember in a positive way. That's what you want, this timeless effect. You know, that way you can reach each generation, even when you're gone. So instead of hashtags, protests, and violence, Reed says he's featuring a prominent African-American artist, one who rose from homelessness to international fame, Jean-Michel Basquiat. Regardless of the discrimination that was going on there, because that was an issue, um, he just kind of exceeded limitations. Reed's interpretation of the movement comes with a nearly $20,000 price tag. Most of it funded through a grant by the Augusta Convention and Visitors Bureau. The rest through the Westaboo Gallery. It was important, again, to the building owner and to our organization and to Visit Augusta to make sure that these voices are being heard. The artist says whenever people see his mural, he wants them to be reminded that they can achieve anything, regardless of their race or circumstances. You know, this is when artists go to work, right? This is when artists make things that are thought-provoking, and that's part of our mission. It's a very good idea to put him in this mural to, like, inspire people to really, really create their own ecosystem, their own reality, no matter what's going on around. Westaboo has given art until the end of the year to finish the mural, but he says he expects to be done within the next month. In Augusta, Sydney Heiberger, on your side. Looks um, great already. We um, can't wait to see it. I'm always amazed at a, at a guy who can do a mural working on that scale. You know, you try to jostle them down on a little piece of paper, but these guys are working on that massive yes. uh, background. That's talent. That is talent. Let's keep an eye on that one. Riley?